Olá, eu sou a Giorgia Anunciação e esse é o terceiro episódio da nossa websérie em comemoração aos 15 anos de Closure. Para gravar esse episódio, estive em Durham, Carolina do Norte, para conversar com alguns dos colaboradores que desenvolveram e mantiveram o Closure. Todas essas pessoas são parte da história do Closure e agora é hora de conhecê-los. Confiram a seguir nossos convidados especiais. Hi, Stu. How are you today? I'm great, Georgia. How are you? I'm fine. Hi, Justin. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm fine. Hi, Alex. Hello. How are you today? I'm doing great. How long have you been working with Closure? Justin and I started Relevance in 2003 as a consultancy and we used a lot of different technologies and for my whole career up to that point we had always used technologies that were popular or that what a customer was using or you know it was we weren't making the choices and we got to a point where we could do some of our own investigation and so I started looking for uh, a technology that would run on the JVM on the Java platform that would be more uh, effective than Java. So I started working on, I actually did a series of blog posts in 2008 um, called java.next where I was looking at these different languages. The idea at the beginning was to really be uh, unbiased and, and compare the different things and maybe use all of them at work. I found Clojure and was doing the comparisons and I just, everything worked for me. I finished up the java.next series and I said we have to become a Clojure shop. We have to figure out, you know, how I mean, we have to convince our customers. We have to convince our own team um, that this is the way to go. And so we started off on that path, and you know, 14 years later, here we are. What do you think that are the main points that distinguish Clojure from other programming languages? Focus on simplicity. The focus on removing the ceremony. I think a lot of programming languages end up being targeted at. Um, helping people communicate with computers and a lot of the problems you end up dealing with in a lot of programming languages are around uh, making the computer happy rather than solving some problem in the world. The whole reason I'm in technology in the first place is not to interact with the computer but to make the computer do something useful for somebody who isn't in the computer. <laughs> um, and so a lot of what I appreciated about Clojure early, what I've come to appreciate even more working with Rich and Stu for low these many years is um, how much effort and thinking and design and passion went into trying to make Clojure into a language where you could think about the non-computer problem and focus on solving for that. How do you see the future of Clojure? I mean, how do you see Clojure in 15 years from now? <laughs> it's hard to imagine what that would be like. R Risha said Clojure is a small language and we intend to keep it that way. Um, so I don't think that we're going to add, um, you know, thousands of new features. It's not that kind of a language. We still think that there is a huge amount of untapped potential um, that we can that we can unlock um, for how people work with their programs in a live basis. I think one of the strongest things about Clojure is your ability to sort of interactively work on programs and have a very fast feedback cycle. Um, so uh, better ways to take that immutable data that we have and surface it uh, and then like let you visualize and see what's there, change it, um, have that sort of interactive experience. Um, that's where we've always had a great story for that. And I think pushing further in that direction, in some ways back to languages of the past, languages like you know, Lisp and Smalltalk that, that had that amazing tools like that. We want to continue pushing towards that. I think there's still lots more that we can do there. But it's certainly my intention to continue to work in Clojure for 15 years, so, so I hope we'll be doing this interview again uh, at that time. As a Lisp, Clojure's core solves a set of problems well and doesn't need a lot of enhancement. The innovation happens in libraries, so I think, I, you know, looking in the shorter term horizon, maybe five years, I think that uh, data science 
is a place where there can and should be a lot of innovation and closure. Not really necessarily with features and closure itself, but taking closure's ideas and putting them in into libraries and putting them into practice. I also think that we have not yet delivered nor explained the developer experience of working inside your program. But it really is about um, living inside the image of your program and manipulating it from there instead of seeing this, the program as something that's outside of you and you manage it with tools and projects. So continuing to, to evangelize that story and show people why that's cool and fun, um, I think is going to be another big thing for me in the next 15 years. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Bye. Gostou desse episódio? Curte, compartilha e se inscreve no canal.